coach um, looking at, I guess the start of the season wasn't too great with Hurricane Helene and um, kind of looking at recovery efforts in Boone and the surrounding areas and, and for the mat room, for the locker room, can you tell me how that's coming along and what that's looking like for the program right now? Well, as you mentioned, you know, obviously our community and, you know, Western North Carolina in, in general has really suffered from the hurricane that came through a couple of weeks ago. Uh, our locker room was destroyed and, and our wrestling room was flooded, but, but fortunately we were able to get, uh, get our wrestling room put back together and in minimal time off the mat, our locker room, we're a little bit displaced from that right now, but all in all, we're very thankful and blessed to be able to be back training in our wrestling room, our gym, doesn't look like it's going to be affected for the season. We're still going to have all our matches in varsity gym. And so we're, we're thankful for that and, and realize that even as, you know, as um, uncomfortable as it is right now to not have a locker room, there's a lot of people in this area outside of the university that are suffering, that have, have suffered way more damage and way more things they're dealing with than, than what we have. So try to remain thankful, uh, trying to get our guys helping out in the community some and, and helping rebuild uh, Boone and surrounding areas as well. Coach, when you talk about those events that are going to be wrestled at home, uh, this is something that uh, you've you've made a point of making it a real event when they come and check out matches in Boone. Looking at the home schedule, uh, West Virginia, a couple of Mountaineers uh, doing a, doing a doing a little battle there. Virginia Tech, obviously, that's become a nice little regional scrap there. Uh, you know, obviously, and then the Southern Conference teams. What are you excited about about the home schedule this year? Well, I think we've got opponents that a lot of our fans want to see us wrestle uh, from the excitement of varsity gym. But I'm also excited about the improvements to our, our dual meet atmosphere, uh, Jason. We've got a new set of inline bleachers that have now been installed. So we're going to have a new set of premium bleachers. I think it adds like 232 seats, seat backs, um, cup holders, a little bit wider seats. So I think our fans uh, that buy those premium seats are going to be really pleased with those. And they're also going to be facing a new video board. We're going to have a video board on the back wall where the current scoreboard is. That's really going to be, it's going to add to the, uh, you know, enhance the experience for our student athletes and our fans. So we got a lot of great improvements that we've made in the off season. And, uh, you know, obviously we're bringing in some great opponents, some P5 opponents that uh, are going to test us. Uh, and I think our fan base wants to see us wrestle those kind of opponents in varsity gym. So really excited about our schedule and, uh, you know, excited to get the season kicked off. Looking at the, um, oh, sorry, Jason, did you no, have Go ahead. You've got it. All right, thanks. Uh, looking at your your new hires, Max Mailer and Paul Bianchi, tell me about maybe how they they came into the positions at App and what it's looking like there. Um, how they're gelling with the team and how they're they're doing um, in their positions right now. Yeah, so Paul, I had actually approached him. I don't know, three or four years ago when he graduated from Little Rock, I had actually coached against him as a competitor. And I always liked the the tenacity with, with which he wrestled and the way he competed. And, uh, you know, I kind of approached him three or four years ago when he graduated about a potential volunteer position. At the time, he wasn't willing to make the move and kind of wanted to stick around Little Rock because he had some younger brothers that were on the team there. And then since that time, uh, over the last three or four years, he moved on and was coaching in Minnesota, uh, Mankato in Minnesota the last couple of years, gaining some experience. And then when I had the uh, opening, he was one of the ones that uh, applied for the position. And I really liked him, had a, you know, had a strong appreciation for him and uh, brought him down on an interview. I thought we, you know, really hit off, hit it off well. And I think his mentality and, and, uh, perspective on things is very well fitting for our culture here at Appalachian State so he's uh, he's been a great addition and then Max Mailer uh, has has come to us you know, a year out of college you know last year he was competing for the uh, Badgers at, at Wisconsin and uh, wrestled at Michigan five years before that so uh, or four years before that so he's he's really had a lot of time um on the mat and, and wrestled at a high level and in, in the big 10. And he's been extremely beneficial to our middleweights and our, our middle upperweights like Will Miller and Luke Uliano and, and Jeremiah Price and uh, Canetta and a lot of our 57, 65, 74 pounders, even Brooker. He's, he's big enough to wrestle with, with everybody from like 49 to 84, which has been, uh, it's been a great asset to some of our, our middle upperweights. They're really getting some great work with him and uh, you know, just great having him. He's got a very positive, uh, you know, personality and, and way of, of way of life. And I think it's, it's been really good. And it's a great addition to our coaching staff. 
Coach, when you talk about that coaching staff, you've had several of your alumni and recent graduates go on and join staffs around the country. That coaching tree that you've got there is starting to blossom. What's it like for you to see, you know, you're going to have more guys that you'll be, you know, in your corner looking across the guys waving. I coached you. What's that like uh, for you as a coach to see uh, you know, your former athletes going out uh, leading other young wrestlers? Yeah, so I was at the Super 32 this past weekend, and Josh Rosa, who's one of my former assistants, now coaches in Pennsylvania at a, at a D3 school, we were having lunch and we were talking about it. It's it's really, I think, starting to just set in how many guys that wrestled for me that are now coaching at the college level. It's it's actually a, a few, and uh, I don't know, I, I think I still consider myself a, a fairly young coach, so I think seeing that many guys that are coaching at the college level is uh, a little bit surreal, uh, but there's quite a few, and I think I'm actually going to speak with Brett, our SID, after this. I'd like to kind of maybe do a little, you know, find something out about all the guys that I have coached that are now coaching, so I think it's uh, it's pretty neat to have you know, a program like Appalachian State that has had tremendous uh, success over the last couple of decades uh, to now seeing uh, some of our former wrestlers take what they've learned here and, and take it to another program and, and uh, invest in student athletes there. So I'm really proud of those guys. It makes me happy to see them uh, when I see them on the road recruiting or, or maybe when we're competing against them at dual meets or tournaments. But, uh, uh, you know, really proud of those guys and how they represented our program. I'm going to speak on that young coaching thing. I'm looking at the tenures of the coaches in the Southern Conference. Coach, you, you, you and Daniel Elliott are the only guys that got double figures in in coaching tenure there. So, uh, you know, can speak on that, you know, the experience that you've got uh, amongst the teams in the conference and then the, the new blood that's been cycling through with the teams. I mean, uh, there's there's positives with that. You get, you get a fresh look at some old teams. Yeah, I think for me, I, I still don't. I don't know. I don't think of myself as being a veteran coach, but even here in the athletic department at Appalachian state, I'm one of the longest tenured coaches here. And uh, you know, time flies when you're having fun and when you're doing what you love and, and I love coaching wrestling and I've been very blessed to be able to do it here at Appalachian state. And this has been such a great university and such a great historic wrestling program just to be able to coach here and, and uh, continue to build this program and move it forward has been just, you know, nothing short of amazing. And, um, you know, I think the conference, you're right. I mean, I, I think I've seen it change, you know, quite a bit over my tenure here with new hires and, and new investments in the sport. And, uh, you know, I think there's, you know, a good blend of, of uh, you know, some youth and some new faces, but also uh, with some fresh ideas, but also, uh, you know, some of the coaches that have, have been there for a while and, and kind of seen how the conference has grown and evolved because the conference is definitely stronger now, I think, competitively than it has been in a long time. You going to go after Paul Mance's uh, coaching tenure record there? I don't know. I don't know how many <laughs> years I have. But I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's a hard job. I mean, it's a lot of stress and I've got, uh, I've been very blessed doing it and and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know. I'm going to take it year by year. I know this, that I'm going to coach as long as I feel like I'm passionate and I want to be in the room every single day. And I think when that time comes where uh, I don't enjoy it or I'm not, it seems like I'm not as invested in it. I'm not going to keep just going. I won't go through the motions. Uh, well, as long as I'm passionate about it and it's, it's what it, gets me up in the morning, then I will, I will continue coaching, but uh, I will not do it past that. So I'm right now I'm excited. I'm motivated. I've got a, a great uh, team right now, a great culture, and I love what I'm doing. I love this university. So, uh, I, you know, for the foreseeable future, I see myself continuing to do what I do. Talk about that, that team you've got here. Uh, you talk about last year when we talked about the, the returning guys, when they make it to the show, uh, what their improvement is like the next year. Looking at the guys that you've got coming back that that spent time on the mats in the postseason, they qualified through the Southern Conference Championships. They heard their names at the NCAA Championships. They know what it's like to be on those mats. What is going to be the difference for them to make that next step? To like, okay, yeah, just happy you've been here. You you know you expect a place, but now you've been here. You've you've seen what it takes for the people around you to place. Uh, what are you looking forward for your returning national qualifiers this year and and their uh, expected performance this season? Well, I think if you look at uh, the experience of those three combined, I mean, Tomas Brooker was so green last year. He was a true freshman for us, goes to the national tournament, had a great season and, and grew tremendously. I mean, he grew 
over the course from November to, to March. It's unbelievable how much he grew, but he's made that much of a jump, if not more, in the offseason. And I think being there, like you said, Jason, it, it opens your eyes to what the level that you're trying to get to is. And, you know, just Tomas, for example, like, there's nobody in this in this country that works harder than him at 184 pounds. I mean, I come in, I can come in at eight o'clock at night, and I, I'm just there. Maybe I'm like, you know, Tuesday night I had to do a, uh, I had to drop my daughter off. She has a late night uh, travel soccer practice at seven. She doesn't get out to eight thirty, so I drop her off at seven, kill some time. I'm in Boone. I just go to the wrestling room. I do a little workout myself, and you know, at eight o'clock never fails. Here comes Tomas Brooker in getting an extra workout in on his own, and that's the kind of young man he is. And I think that. I don't have to talk to him about what his goals are to know what his goals are, just because you can see it in everything he does every single day. He's putting in extra time, extra energy, e extra effort. And you know that he wants to be a national champion and be the very best uh, in the country, just by the way he carries himself and the, and the amount of time and commitment he puts in the sport. Will Miller made a tremendous jump from year one at the NCAA championships to year two. He had a great U23 uh, freestyle nationals. And I think it helped his, his confidence grow tremendously. I think coach Mailer being here to scrap with him is helping tremendously in his development. I think he's, uh, you know, I don't think anything short of the podium is going to, is going to make him happy. And then Sean Carter, he's a veteran. He's been in this program six years, has been to the show. Um, uh, and I think he is excited to, uh, you know, try this new weight out at 141. He looks strong. He looks healthy. And, uh, he's been a very, valuable asset to our team because I feel like he's been grabbing a lot of the young guys over the course of the last eight to 10 months and really pulling them in and uh, mentoring them and, and showing them the ropes and helping them grow as well. So those three guys are not going to be happy just getting to the national tournament. I think all three of those guys um, want to do something special and be on the podium when it comes March. I'm changing gears, coach, looking at, um, you know, kind of these newer, I guess, rules that have come out. So kind of uh, we've gotten rid of the the national letter of intent, but we're looking at the hot button topics of the revenue sharing model, NIL. How do you think all of these changes and all of this, this buzz that's coming up, right? How do you think this is going to affect programs like App Wrestling? I think it's still too early to tell. Um, I think there's a lot of challenges with, with what we're doing right now. I, 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 Personally, uh, I have my own opinions about it. I think it's it's getting real muddy. The waters are for coaches to navigate and to continue to develop young men and it be more about uh, their development as young men than it is just simply about how much money you can pay them at that moment. I, I do think that some of that's being lost in college athletics, which I think is a shame. Uh, I'm not a uh, opposed to an athlete getting paid or getting, you know, benefiting from their name, image, and likeness, but I'm not sure that's exactly what I think is going on. I think now it's just pay to play. And, and, uh, and now it's just, I think we're some of the, the things that, that this sport has taught me and taught so many of us over the years is getting lost a little bit. And uh, that that is something that I think is a challenge. It's hard as a coach to navigate that with all the current challenges that we have you know, just in itself, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, I worry that this revenue sharing model, uh, you know, could, could have some negative effects on all college athletes and uh, especially Olympic sports. And uh, I don't know, I think it's still too early to tell. I'm not sure that uh, there's got to be some accountability in, in my opinion. Like, I don't think that it should just be the wild, wild west to where, you can transfer as many times as you want to. There's no uh, contract buyout. I mean, personally, and I, I don't want to get in the weeds with this, but I think there should be contract buyouts, just like there are for professional athletes, just like there are for college coaches. Um, if a student athlete, if you've invested in that student athlete and you develop them, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I think it's right for a program to just come in and steal your investment and that program is left with nothing and then they benefit from it. When you're the one to put all those blood, sweat, and tears in those kids, develop them from an average athlete to a uh, potential All-American candidate. And I think at least, it, it, you know, I would feel better about it if, if a school like a P5 wanted to go get that student athlete, they should have to pay that student, to pay that university uh, some kind of buyout, just like my contract. If I leave before my contract's up, there's a buyout. And so the school that I would go to would have to either pay it or I would have to pay it. And I think there's got to be some kind of accountability like that, um, because otherwise I think it's really 
muddy in the waters for a lot of the values that I think college athletics has taught for so many years and I still believe in and I think are really, really important in the development of these young men and women. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate that. To that point, Coach, I want to bring up uh, a school down the road that's become a pretty good little rival. Uh, it's been it's been chippy on on the social media. It's been chippy in the stands, but it's been ultimately uh, healthy for the Southern Conference, and that's Campbell with the uh, the announcement. That, well, actually, it actually I don't know if you even know it's been an official announcement from the school, but the team was notified that uh, scholarships are going to be pulled, and that's going to be whittled down to what Campbell kind of used to be uh, a non factor. And they have done a tremendous job at building big rosters and and creating a, a buzz around that school. Something you've done and you've, you've been talked about is how much value the wrestling program brings to the university. And I'm not talking just about value from, uh, you know, how many butts you're putting in the seats, but the value that the student athletes, that community brings to your school. And that's something Campbell also has done is they've put a value. Hey, here's what we are bringing to the school. What does a wrestling program like Campbell, like App State, granted one's private, one's public, do to bring value to a university that's often overlooked and something that needs to be a speaking point when these type of topics come up, if revenue sharing is going to come in and all of a sudden the non-revenue sports have to give up everything that they earned to give it to one or two sports that seem to be favored in the, in the mass sense of sports fandoms opinions. Well, I think first and foremost, you know, what we're about in college athletics. Yeah. Obviously we want to compete to win. I mean, we're always, we want to be competitive, but we're also about developing young men and young women. I think that's our purpose, right? Like, I think that's what college athletics was designed for. I think that's what it should still be focused on. And I, that's kind of what I meant a minute ago is I think it's getting lost that, that first of all, like, you know, no matter you pick a program, whether it be App State or Campbell, you know, we're doing some things to develop those young men and those young women that are going to be productive citizens uh, someday when they, when they go out in the workforce and, and uh, into our country and I think that like for us specifically, and, and I've, you know, I can't spe speak specifically to Campbell, but I've always tried to create value in our community. I mean, we do a lot to, to give back to the community here. Like last week we had, uh, after we had Saturday morning practice, but we sent like 14 guys out in the community that helped uh, hurricane uh, victims that were like, uh, you know, had damage to their property. And our guys have been doing that and helping out in the community. We run a youth wrestling club that has about 50 young uh, kids in it that really has develop, helped develop our fan base. So we're giving to our community. And then, and then for us, Jason, we want to put butts in the seats. I mean, at the end of the day, that speaks to a lot. I mean, it, it does matter. You know, when we wrestle uh, in varsity gym on a, uh, you know, on a dual meet, uh, on a night dual meet and it's packed and there's people standing around and we have to go and purchase a new set of bleachers just to be able to hold the people that says something to our university about the value that the wrestling program has here in the community and in the university. And, and I think that we're, we're really trying to compete for championships, but also show that we have value in this community and we're giving back to this community. And I think that, that that's the, the important thing for every program. And I think that's what the focus should be. Um, I don't know all the details about the Campbell situation yet. I do think it's unfortunate. Uh, despite our rivalry, and it's been heated at times, I don't think I would be remiss to, to say, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, there's been some some bad blood between us and them and uh, some things. But, but I will tell you that it helps Appalachian State for Campbell to be a strong program and a formidable rival. That only helps my program. I do not want them going away. I want them to be strong as ever and us to compete against them and keep the rivalry. And so anything that I can do to help build wrestling overall, not just my program, then that's what I'm going to do.